Welcome to Convos from the Couch by Life Stance Health, where leading mental health professionals help guide you on your journey to a healthier, more fulfilling life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Convos from the Couch by Life Stance Health. I'm Nicolette Lianza, and on this episode, I'll be talking with Lisa Dejanet, a clinician from one of our Cincinnati, Ohio offices, as well as her client, Peyton. And we'll be talking about women and ADHD. So welcome, Lisa and Peyton. Great to have you both on. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great to be on. Yeah. Great. We're going to have a great conversation. Let me jump in and say, studies have shown that girls are more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD later in life, that they are often underdiagnosed because they are more likely to be passed off as being daydreamers or overly emotional. So I look forward to our conversation today as we talk about ADHD and how it may manifest in women and girls. So thank you again, both of you. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So let's go with you first, Peyton. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So I am 25. I have just recently been diagnosed with ADHD. I think it was April of this year and I've been in therapy since and I'm a full-time business owner and makeup artist. Nice. Nice. Great. Thank you. And Lisa, what about you? I am Lisa DeJarnett. I'm a licensed independent social worker and psychotherapist. I've been a clinician practicing for 30 years in a variety of settings. I had my own private practice in um, Columbus for several years before moving to Cincinnati area. And I've been with LifeStand since 2018, primarily working with adults, individuals, and couples. I'm also a person living with ADHD, which was not diagnosed until after college, marriage, and having two kids. And because I have such a passion in working with women in ADHD, I started up an outpatient therapy group recently with the help of Mindy Perry in our Washington office, who I know you had on. Our yeah, plug for at. Mindy, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Thank you. Great. Awesome. So you definitely come with a lot of experience with helping those with living with ADHD and you yourself. And I love that you use the phrase living with ADHD as opposed to saying, I am ADHD. We're more than just being our diagnoses. So appreciate you exactly. saying that, Lisa. Yeah. So Peyton, let's hear a little bit more about your story. So can you please share your own personal experience with ADHD? Definitely. As you spoke to earlier, Women with ADHD, the kind of indicators are so different for guys. And so for me, I was always super charismatic, super bubbly. I could make anybody smile and laugh. I could talk the socks off anybody. But in saying that, I'm constantly chasing my tail my whole life. And I just thought that up until this year, that is how everybody functioned. And I just couldn't get it together. I really internalized that, which so many women with ADHD do. Um, I internalized every little thing that kind of came with that and like the negative stigmas that came around that. Um, so for me personally, I have both hyperactive ADHD um, and inattentive ADHD. So I've swing them both. But I really think of ADHD as a superpower. It comes with a, a lot of incredible things. And it also comes with a lot of daily struggles, ins and outs. And so I hope that somebody like hearing our information and hearing my story can maybe have somebody think, oh, am I on the neurodivergent scale? Yeah. Thank you. What is the hardest thing for you about having an ADHD diagnosis? Hmm. I think initially the hardest thing was I very much set myself up in a way that I felt like if I couldn't accomplish something, it's because I didn't want it enough. Yeah. If I really wanted something, I would go for it. I have these levels of like hyper focus and like I can jump off the cliff and chase my dreams. And I've always been that way. So I just thought when I would have these big failures that I must have not really wanted it which is like a devastating and horrible feeling, especially when I know that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And so after being diagnosed, I really had to like deconstruct that mm -hmm. and realize that it's not that I'm incapable, which is the feeling that I am feeling, it's that I didn't have the correct tools 
to help me guide along the process because we're living in a world for neurotypicals and I'm trying to like just figure it out in between. So for me, like coming to grips with that and still coming to grips with that was definitely one of my hard points. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that. And I think you hit it on the head is the message you're giving yourself of there must be something wrong with me that I'm not able to do this. And I think that's often the message maybe also given to you outside of yourself, maybe from those around you saying, come on, what's wrong with you? I don't know if that was the case for you. But it's hard not to get that internalized. So it sounds, Lisa, maybe you helped Peyton with reframing some of those messages. Is that, you want to talk a little bit more about that, Lisa? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are not neurotypical. Our brains are different in structure, chemistry, and function. And so we often do internalize being different as our deficit instead of our uniqueness. So we try to conform and change ourselves and fit in. And there's so many misunderstandings and misconceptions about ADHD. And sometimes it's stigmatized as being related to IQ when the Mm -hmm. average intelligence is like 123 or that it's a personality flaw or a character defect. And we just need to work harder and try more instead of just understanding that we're hardwired differently. And often we're very successful in a certain area where we have an interest-based nervous system and we hyper-focus and we're really good at that. And then it looks like for the mundane and boring or ordinary things that kind of die off on our radar, that we're not trying hard enough or that we're just unmotivated or lazy. And so there's a lot of stigma and judgment. Again, those messages being tossed at people living Mm -hmm. with ADHD for sure. So Peyton, do you feel that there are some benefits to having ADHD? I know earlier you alluded to like superpower. Tell us more about that. Oh my gosh. There are so many benefits to having ADHD. One of my big ones that I was saying earlier is just the charisma that comes with having ADHD. I've even found myself out in the wild being attracted to other people (laughs) who are on the neurodivergent scale. I love that you called it out in the wild. Oh, there's another one. Come here. I see you. Um, (laughs) But I just found that I'm able to have a different level of empathy for people because I'm so misunderstood Mm. by so many people that I'm able to, to understand people in a way that they may have never been understood before. And I truly believe with if you can have an interaction with somebody and they leave feeling better about themselves that's a superpower all in itself. And I really think that it's that high level of empathy for me that can really target that. And I think sometimes when we talk about targeting something like that specifically can almost, there's like a lot of like social climbing in the world and making somebody feel better to get something. Um, And I just want to make it clear, like with ADHD, it's just this this baseline of constantly being misunderstood and this baseline of having these really intense emotions that you so desperately want to give that love and understanding to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what it is, pure enjoy. That was very well put. Oh my gosh, very well put. Thank Thank you. you. So Lisa, let's flip this to you a little bit as you educate us a little bit more about ADHD. So it starts us off with the, how does ADHD manifest differently in women and girls? And why are women so often misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed? Yeah, I think the initial research that we had on ADHD was done on boys and mm-hmm. boys typically are external. Their symptoms are external. So we see them as being hyperactive and loud and causing trouble in school and in the classroom and at home. And so they typically get diagnosed and treated and tend to improve. Whereas the little girls don't get noticed because oftentimes their internal struggles are not seen and they struggle silently because they're smart, they're talented, they're pleasant, they're likable, they get good grades. And so it often goes undetected and misunderstood. And I think Mm -hmm. Russell Barkley says it best that we have amazing brains. We don't have deficient brains. We have deficient attention. Mm -hmm. And so we have amazing race car, Ferrari for brains. And then we have bicycle brakes, which are not. (laughs) That's a great analogy. Yeah. And it's just not equipped to manage the speed at which our brains process information. Mm -hmm. So it's the emotional regulation, the braking system that's super challenging, but it can be mastered and managed, but not cured. Yeah. 
I used to work as a school therapist and if I was doing classroom observations, I would see the the stereotypical, we'll say hyperactive boy, not fidgeting, moving around, falling yeah. out of a seat. And then I'd also see the girl who might just be like, just staring off, staring out the window. And yeah. because that boy, the squeaky wheel tends to get decreased, that boy would often be the one because he's interrupting the class and learning. So he, like you said, he would often, boys tend to get diagnosed a bit quicker mm-hmm. and sooner. But at the same time, we're missing that that girl who's staring out the window and just get lost in her own world is still just as much struggling. She might not be interrupting the class as she's doing good. And so I think you're giving some really great examples there. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also think, too, that like how we're talking about women with ADHD can really like excel in school and maybe yep. she's just daydreaming, but she's right. still getting good grades. True. We have these extremely yeah. high expectations set on us mm-hmm. um, because you have a great personality and then yeah. have like a work ethic and everything. And then it is a shock to other people that we could have such trouble in some mm-hmm. specific areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they view us with these high expectations, which they should have. But I think a lot of times it can be a lot more understanding to men. And I think a lot of times it can be very well understood in autism that somebody can be really smart mm-hmm. and people with something socially. Mm-hmm. It can be really confusing and then frustrating for yeah. women with ADHD to have that high expectation set on them mm-hmm. and to not have to not have the right words, mm-hmm. maybe is like the right way to yeah. say it. Um, yeah. To really like target what that feeling is. Mm-hmm. Right. My gosh, I agree. One of the most common things that I hear is, oh, I don't have ADHD or a clinician or a physician tells, you know, an adult woman that, oh, you don't have ADHD. You did great in school. You're smart. And it's like, that's right at all. It has nothing to do with intelligence. So So you can see how that gets fed into. So if a woman is going to their primary care physician saying, I think I might have this and then doctors oh no you did you look you have a master's degree you're doing this you're fine and that message that she's thinking oh yeah invalidating too but really masking and missing the point that yeah she might truly have it mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think it's so so sad to miss a yeah. huge internal struggle like that mm-hmm. and i think that happens with a lot of doctors mm-hmm. and i know i've had a lot of friends in my social circle who have had really difficult time just getting in with the right person but just like with anything taking your time and finding that person who will hear you out yes. it's so important and like at the end of the day you know yourself the best yeah mm-hmm. very true very true yeah Isn't- a lot of the women with adhd that i see they just work so hard and over function and burn themselves out mm-hmm. and then feel badly about themselves when they yeah. do crap burn or fall. And um, why is this so hard for me? And they start talking negatively to themselves. And in fact, the average person with ADHD has heard 10,000 more negative messages by the time they're 10. So we're mm-hmm. just like, why can't we get this together? Why is this so hard for me? The things that we struggle with might be obvious. Uh, We might forget things or have problems with time management or daily tasks or organization. And um, so we end up feeling badly about ourselves and not embrace our differences and learn the skills and tools that we need to set ourselves up for success. So you already started touching on some of the challenges women may face. Can you tell us a little bit more of some of the challenges women may face? Yeah, I think the emotional dysregulation is a big piece of that. And a lot of women have multiple roles and are Mm -hmm. very emotional and aware and intuitive and caring. And they focus on everybody else, but then they have nothing left over to give themselves. Right. And that does not create a good recipe for stress management and regulating our emotions. And so a lot of times we might just look like moody or spent or stressed out the multiple roles and all the things that we do contribute. And then sometimes lack of sleep, lack of self-care, yeah. care of everybody else. And we don't tune into our own emotions and needs. And that is just like a recipe for, again, the crash and burn. If we don't know the way our brains work and the skills that we need to equip ourselves. So what are some of the strengths that women with ADHD may have? Yeah, one that we were just talking about last week, which is like one of our favorite is we said like, 
women with ADHD are brave. And oh, I yeah. think that like for us, like we don't think about it actively in the moment, but mm-hmm. something that I had brought up is we may be the ones to like go and ask the boss if we can go do this extra yeah. thing. Or, hey, what do you guys think about going and doing this? And some of that comes from being a little impulsive and that hyperactivity and, oh, I got to say it or else I'm going to forget it. (laughs) Right, right. Uh Yeah. But then like some people sit back and they may have had that same thought for months and months, Right, but it takes courage to do that. And Mm -hmm. so I think this level of like bravery and courage to live authentically yourself and ask questions and move about the way that you do is Mm -hmm. like definitely one of the high, like, yeah, yeah. I recently heard that some of the strengths that women with ADHD have are similar to elite athletes, right? So we're passionate, (laughs) fearless, hardworking, relentless. We think outside of the box. We're good under pressure. We're creative. We're fierce. We're intelligent. We're caring. We're talented, Mm -hmm. insightful, bold, and courageous, resilient. Like we're all the things, but we try to be like everybody else when we're not. And so we just, like Peyton said, need to embrace our authentic self and really accentuate the the strengths that we have and the the uniqueness that we bring Mm -hmm. into the world and the things that we offer. Definitely. I think that also starts with just accepting ourselves. So then you can allow yourself and permit yourself to show your authentic self too. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Any other takeaways you'd like to share? Peyton, anything else you'd like to add? Oh, definitely. I think for me, like getting started can be the hardest part. Really like recognizing, especially for women, that maybe some of these things that you look at as like faults in your life are maybe not faults at all, but are maybe the only way that you know how to cope Mm -hmm. in a neurological society. And so I would really urge people to, if they are feeling like they are maybe missing the mark on things, I know something for me, like in something Lisa mentioned earlier is like mundane tasks. Like you just can't remember it for anything you really want to, or you can get really hyper-focused into things and do really well at it. And you like maybe have this off the beaten path personality. If you are having some of these indicators, I really just, I really hope that whoever is going through that really takes the time to get the help that they need. I can absolutely tell you between getting on medication and especially being in therapy has changed my life Mm -hmm. for the better. And I'm just so thankful that I at 25 have been able to grab the reins of this and start learning because there's so much to learn um, for myself, so much to teach for other people. So I really just urge everyone that if you think there could be a possibility lean into it. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Thank you. That's critical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would just say there's hope. ADHD is real and it's more common than we think. It's treatable and manageable. Mm-hmm. And so I just encourage um, people to educate themselves and their loved ones, get help, get treatment, learn the skills and tools you need to set yourself up for success and be the best version of yourself. This is a lifelong learning process. So keep talking and searching until you find someone that hears you mm-hmm. and we need you. Yeah. Yes. So be yeah. you and yeah. get in community because we are better together. Yeah. And if I can give a shout out to our first outpatient therapy group and my beautiful daughters that also have ADHD and all the women out there that have ADHD, we see you, yes. you're important, you're amazing, you're special, and we are better because of each other. Mm-hmm. And also thanks to the family members that love us and try to understand us and are patient with us. Yeah. Like my husband. And, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's so sweet. Oh my gosh, you two are amazing. Woo-hoo. You got me all pumped. Love that. Love that. Thank you both. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And thank you for all the work that you do in educating and supporting us and giving us this opportunity and platform. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Peyton, you're wonderful. You're amazing. Lisa, thank you. Thank you for being willing to come and share your knowledge as well. So thank you both again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd also like to thank the team behind the podcast, Jason Clayton, Juliana Whitten, and Chris Kelman. With a special thanks to Jason Clayton, who edits our episode. Thank you, everyone.